Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Nice to see you all. Rabbi Jeff asked me to give a five-minute midrash on the subject of fasting. Ouch. <laughs> well, actually, not ouch, because in our Wednesday small group meeting, one of our group raised the subject of fasting. And that question made me very curious. I wanted to see what the Bible actually said about the subject, which I personally have shied away from for many years. I'm not very good at it. I didn't look into how to fast or the medical issues associated with fasting, but rather I wanted to get to what the essence of fasting was all about. So I looked at 49 instances in the Tanakh and the Brit Hadashah. Now, the majority of the fasts recorded had people repenting of sin, humbling themselves, and then either seeking deliverance or direction or both. Very interesting. There were also quite a few instructions on how to fast correctly, how not to fast, but most had this pattern, repenting of sin, humbling of self, and then seeking deliverance or direction or both, but for a specific matter. You'll see what I'm coming to in a minute. Here's an example from scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 3 to 6, a story everybody is probably very familiar with. Samuel addressed all the people of Israel and said, If you are returning to Adonai with all your heart, then be done with the foreign gods and the Ashtaroth that you have with you, and direct your hearts to Adonai. If you will serve only him, he will rescue you from the power of the Philistines. So, the people of Israel banished the Baalim and the Ashtaroth and served only Adonai. Samuel said, gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray for you to Adonai. So they gathered together at Mizpah, drew water, and poured it out before Adonai. They fasted that day, and they said there, we have sinned against Adonai. I'll stop there. The people had strayed from Adonai. They were in a war against the Philistines. They came to Samuel for help. Now, Samuel became a judge eventually. But at this point, Samuel just spells it out. He gets straight to it. Return to Adonai with all your heart. The essence of revival. The people are serious. They show it by fasting and praying, humbling themselves, asking for forgiveness, and then pleading for a specific deliverance from the Philistines. A battle which it is recorded. Adonai won for them. What fascinated me about these accounts was that there's a very, very clear focus for a fast. Now, I'm a rail vehicle engineer, a simple soul, but I work a little with things called lasers and radars. Yeah, it's a long story. I won't bore you with it. Now, laser interests me because it's a light that it's a device that just emits light at very specific wavelengths, and it's focused into a teeny weeny beam, and all those beams of light are in step. Yeah. They are completely locked in step. And we amplify that light and produce a really sharp focused beam. Now, here's a comparison just to think about. If I get a really bright floodlight and shine it on the wall, really, really powerful, it illuminates the wall. But the wall doesn't fall down. It just lights it up. It's just illuminated. If I take the same amount of light energy in that massive floodlight concentrate it to a tiny beam and focus it on the same wall, guess what happens? If it's a laser, it can actually penetrate the surface of the wall. What's the difference? Simple. Same amount of energy is used in both cases. But with the laser, it's focused into a very, very small area. Produces a visible result that we can see, yeah? We see the hole. Unfocused, we illuminate. Focused, we penetrate. Now, I think the scriptures have a nugget here for us. They always do, because they're genius. Laser-like focus in prayer and fasting on a small number of specific needs produces an intensity that penetrates the surface, the barrier, the obstacle, what we're trying to get through. Now, not longer after we came to City of David, Rabbi Jeff gave us some very, very sagely wise counsel. Thank you, sir. 
about prayer and answers to prayer. He said this, and I will never forget it. Seek to align yourself with the will of Adonai. Pray in accordance with his will. Then expect an answer. Wow. That sounds simple, but boy, is it hard to do. (laughs) It involves repentance, humility, surrender, and focus. In the scriptures I looked at on fasting and praying, repentance was at the top of the list, accompanied by humbling of oneself, and then a specific focus on a specific need. So the underlying pattern is this, align with Adonai, then focus in alignment with repentance and humility. So why fasting? I'm closing with this. Simple. Fasting helps us focus. It drives us towards aligning our will with the will of Adonai. How? Fasting humbles us. We're hungry. We become aware of our total dependency on him. Somebody once said, it lowers the volume on the world around us. And if we apply fasting wisely, it helps us to listen, align, and focus. In this noisy, busy age, listening is challenging, especially for me. Ask, I listen. I don't listen. (laughs) So anything that helps lower the volume and helps me to listen is actually quite powerful. So I'm going to close with this as a pattern in the scriptures that I can summarize for prayer and fasting. And to me, it looks like this. Repent. Humble myself. Focus on alignment with God, with Adonai. Pray specifically with specific tight laser beam focus. Then wait upon his answer give thanks. Amen. Thank you.